part two, I accidentally clicked the stop button. Guys, if that happens again, I'm real, really gonna lose. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my nipples if that happens again. I think, ow! You think, ow? <laughs> I think this is the last one. Tailbone on the chair. Bill Gramatica was a promising USF kicker drafted by the Cardinals in the fourth round. Early in the December game against the New York Giants, Gramatica hit a routine 42-yard field goal. He took a couple of steps before leaping off the ground, fist pumping in celebration. But everything came quickly crashing down, and so did he. As soon as his leg hit the turf, Gramatica tumbled to the ground and grabbed his knee in wincing pain. This was like the football version of those nightmares you had as a kid when you dreamt you forgot your pants before a big speech. After evaluation, Bill suffered a torn ACL ending his season. A hilarious injury. What? First of all, how do you think that's hilarious? And how do you break your knee doing a celebration? I feel bad for him. Yeah, I feel bad for him. And I feel bad for him also because people think it's funny. But how about I break your arm and his power on long distance kicks. Gramatica only played two more seasons in the league and a quick cup of coffee in the Arena Football League before retiring. Gramatica will forever be known as the goofy kicker who got hurt celebrating. So there you have it. The weirdest injuries in the history. What's the weirdest reaction. way you've injured yourself? In Let us know in the comments. Do you know what that is? No, we're going to do a reaction to something I find. It's just going to be random. No, we're doing this. We're gonna do one of these. No, ten, um, no, ten craziest fights. Ten craziest fights. So we're doing ten craziest fights. Foils in the game of football. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Sometimes things get out of hand. Fans are given absolute treats of insanity and violence. Here's what? The top 10 craziest fights in NFL history. Fights? Fights. Miles Garrett versus Mason Rudolph. Arguably the craziest moment in football history. Late in a game on Thursday night between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett hit quarterback Mason Rudolph. Rudolph took exception to the hit and grabbed Miles' face mask. The two scuffled on the ground and fought back up to their feet. When Garrett yanked Rudolph's helmet off, Mason refused to back down, regardless of the two people between them. Then the legit craziest thing ever happened. Garrett used Rudolph's own helmet and bashed him in the head with it. Okay, you getting in trouble for that. I think you got suspended. Just by ripping this helmet off, you're suspended. Everyone stood I'm going to suspend you from the NFL. Greatest best friend, Marquise Pouncy. Pouncy, just like the name, pounced on Garrett. <laughs> he attacked with vicious rights and kicked him in the head. The NFL's malice in the palace was worth the price of admission. Both benches cleared. It took several minutes to settle it down. The helmet smash was heinous and could have severely injured Rudolph or any other player. The NFL. It, it was anus? Nice. It was anus. <laughs> it was anus. Nice. Yeah, Not like suspending Miles here for the remainder of the season. Pouncy. I knew it. I knew it. Odell Beckham Jr. versus Josh Norman. Speaking of two guys yeah, who my. just don't like each other, the beef of Odell Beckham Jr. and Josh Norman is one of our favorites. Part of what made Josh Norman great was a huge chip on his shoulder. For that same reason, he hated OBJ and his princess upbringing as a first round pick. Norman and other Panthers ran around the pre game like bat, swinging it around and trying to intimidate the Giants. This pick
pissed off Beckham and set the tone for the rest of the game. Regardless of the integrity of the game, what happened next was awesome. Every play, it seemed like the cameras were cutting from the play to focus on the real action. Norman and OBJ getting into it. Every run was a chance to watch these guys go to war. Emotions continued to rise, as did the drama in the game. One time, Norman would get the better. The next time, OBJ would hand the Norman to the ground. They traded blows. On fourth and two, Beckham caught a pass for a first down. Wait, what the heck? Why are you going to trade battles? Like, pop, like, pop. Now the other guy, pop. Wait, now the other guy goes, pop, pop. Nah. Norman slung him to the ground and swallowed him as he got up. Beckham tried to trip him, earning the first of six personal fouls called upon them. In the third quarter, Odell went on a headhunt for Norman, not once, but twice in a play, rocking him with a bad cheap shot. Norman had officially thrown Odell off of his game, living in his head. In the next round, Norman blasted Odell. However, the game looked like OBJ and the Giants were gaining their composure. They fought back from 20 eight points down. On fourth and five, game on the line, Odell got the last laugh. He beat Norman in coverage, scored the game-tying touchdown, and did his best AI step-over impression over Norman. The two still hate each other, and this was just the start of an awesome rivalry. AJ Green versus Jalen Ramsey. Talk about two and three. AJ Green. No, everybody versus Jalen Ramsey. He pretty much hates everybody. He slams everybody, throws everybody. Jeez, this dude needs to be suspended. He's literally the roughest player in the NFL currently. Green is the reserved silent killer receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. Jalen Ramsey, one of the game's best trash talkers, and a lockdown corner for Saxonville at the time. Saxonville? He his words to get under the skin of the mild-mannered receiver. Every play, he was pushing Green and calling him soft. Green just couldn't get going. Getting physically shut down and mentally, it looked like Ramsey was all in his head. Green started yapping back, calling him weak after he caught a ball that quarterback Andy Dalton pushed too far outside. With only one catch in the first half, Ramsey continued to talk and push. However, it was one push too many as he shoved AJ Green and walked off. AJ came up behind Jalen and put him in a rear naked choke, choking him with a as soon as he hit the ground. Jalen Ramsey deserves that. He literally deserves that. So, he doesn't care. He like body slams people. But now he's come literally. He's getting beat up. Let's see how he likes it. Wait, what? <laughs> and slammed him back down as he got up. It's one of the most surprising moments from Green. He just lost his cool. AJ Green continued to hammer Ramsey until the two teams intervened. Both were ejected from the game. Cortland Finnegan versus Andre Johnson. You know, corners and receivers really don't like each other, do they? Speaking of silent assassins, Andre Johnson was one of the league's strongest and most physical receivers. Cortland Finnegan was the league loudmouth. <laughs> Round one, fight. After two plus plays of physical blocking, Finnegan's helmet flung off to get revenge. The very next play, Cortland made it his mission to get after Johnson. Andre turned him around and snatched his helmet off his head, and we're off. As he was hitting Finnegan, Finnegan got a tug of Johnson's face mask and ripped his helmet off, launching it what? How do you literally throw a helmet boy. 20 feet? Boy, 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 boy. Andre Johnson spun him down. Overhand right after overhand right after overhand right. The two ended up getting separated. Nice. Sheesh. Winner and new middleweight champion of the world, Andre Johnson. Gordon Finnegan learned a valuable lesson that day. Akeem Tlaib versus Michael Crabtree. These guys hated each other. I'll start with the chain. Michael Crabtree is known for wearing the chain in 
every game and that, for some reason, a gave to lead just didn't like. In 2016, the league decided to do something about it. He snatched the chain right off Crabtree's neck. On the sidelines, Tlaib was joking about it, reenacting the action. Crabtree didn't respond on that day. He took the high road, but he did say he didn't like Tlaib. In the next meeting, he taped the chain. Tlaib was trying to make a point. Crabtree came in with a plan, and it only took the first drive to put it in motion. As Crabtree blocked Tlaib, Akib took the liberty of removing the chain from Crabtree once more. This time, Crabtree didn't hold back. He viciously blocked to lead into oblivion, shoveling him into the dirt along the sidelines. He knocked over other players, chain gang, and equipment guys in his wake. The gloves were off, and a chain too. Tlaib ripped Crabtree's helmet off of him before heaving it right back at him. The helmet nearly hit multiple people, and both teams cleared their bench. It was like the end of an action movie. The two main characters fought separately to the band of armies. They swung wildly at each other. We never really got to see the boxing match, so we're still waiting on the pay-per-view. Steve Smith versus Malcolm Jenkins. Steve Smith will be known for two things, the best little guy in the NFL and an obnoxiously awesome trash talker. You don't spit as much as Smith and not get into your fair share of fights. First, Steve Smith embarrasses Saints corner Jabari Greer on a jump ball, tossing him away like garbage as he scampered into the end zone. Apparently, it hurt Roman Harper's feelings to get even. Harper hit Smith with a blatant cheap shot after he scored. A brawl broke out almost immediately, but the best part is Steve Smith didn't even get involved yet. He boasts and celebrates, beating on his helmet. Then Smith ran to the first guy he found, who happened to be Malcolm Jenkins. In one of the most hardcore moves ever, he grabs Jenkins by the face mask, pulling him around like a mean nanny pulls around a spoiled eight-year-old. He hoisted Jenkins in the air and slammed him back to the ground, choke slam style, as the two teams pile on the action. After manhandling Jenkins, Smith casually separates himself from the state bodies. Don't talk about the Superman's cat. And don't mess with Steve Smith. Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore is the world's expert on stopping Mike Evans. Evans' size, speed, and strong hands make him nearly unguardable. But Lattimore dominates their biannual meetings. Maybe that frustration got to him on this occasion. Lattimore and Jamie's Winston were arguing near the sideline. As Lattimore walked away, Winston taunted him, pointing at the field and then pointing at Lattimore before he started shoving him with his finger. Lattimore turned around and shoved him back. They were jawing when Mike Evans blocked Lattimore, coming from out of nowhere, laid out. Evans went to the ground and pounded Lattimore, but then he's blasted by another Saints defender with a rescue. A Pier 6 brawl erupted from the sidelines. For a moment, absolute bedlam covered the TV screen. Saints head coach Sean Payton is seen halfway across the field berating and pointing at the Bucks sidelines. Players had to be separated. The blood between Evans and Lattimore still hasn't settled in 2020. Just a few weeks Weeks ago, they were at it again, and we're all here for it. Buddy Ryan and Kevin Gilbride. Finally, Wait, coaches? A coach on coach action. Buddy Ryan was the defensive coordinator for the 1993 Houston Oilers, where Kevin Gilbride was the offensive play caller. Buddy is one of the most colorful characters in the history of the NFL. He became known for the 46 defense, but mainly just being insane. On national television, the Oilers jumped to a 14-0 lead and were driving again. Way too aggressive. Gilbride called a play that led to the quarterback fumbling. Buddy was a huge critic of Gilbride's offense, mocking the run and shoot as the chuck and duck. As they came off the field, Ryan had words for Kevin. He clearly muttered back, and Ryan only got louder. In a bizarre moment, up two touchdowns on a winning team, Buddy channeled his Evander Holyfield and jabbed Gilbride with a strong right hand. Gilbride was stunned, and before he even got to react, Oilers players separated the two. It was all the NFL could talk about. The feelings but he said that Gilbride will be selling insurance in two years. Well, but he didn't get along with two of them anyway. Joey Porter versus Willie Green. This fight couldn't even wait until the 
on kickoff. Joe Brady got the pregame trash talking game early. He crossed the 50 yard line, which is frowned upon during warm ups, ripping Browns players as they came out the tunnel. Well, he finally ran up on the right guy, William Green. As the Browns runner started jawing back, Green got into Porter's face, who then spit in Green's eyes. Green retaliated with a massive headbutt ding. It was on. There's not much to see right now. But why are you beating people up before a kickoff? I gotta end this video. The phone's almost dead.